If you love practicing your watercolor flowers and you want your practice to look pretty, this is the video for you. Today I'm sharing the magic of masking fluid and together we're going to create a simple, beautiful watercolor floral. Hey friends, what's up? My name is Shada Campbell and in today's video, we're going to explore masking fluid. I'll show you how to use it and how it can be effective for your watercolor paintings. But first I wanted to mention that I now have t-shirts. <laughs> it's been a few months. They've um, been really well received. If you've bought one, thank you for your support and thanks for emailing me about sizes and these are the little kinks and everything that we're working out. I think we've narrowed these shirts down down to the ones that are really the perfect size and fit, namely this unisex style that is my favorite. It's a boxy fit that looks great, like tucked into jeans and also really nice um, untucked with leggings and that kind of thing. So thanks for your support, guys. Buy a shirt if you wanna wear a Shada Campbell design. The link is in the video description or you can shop the merch shelf here on YouTube. And I also have a tote bag design coming. Unlike the shirts, it's going to be a limited edition. There's only limited quantities. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram so you know when that is happening. Okay, today we're going to practice our loose watercolor florals together, but there's a twist. We're going to mask out areas of the paper and the result is gonna be this really interesting and unique and beautiful watercolor floral piece. So let's get started. First step, we need to talk about supplies. You're going to need watercolor paper. I'm working on a nine by 12 hot pressed pad of paper. You could use cold pressed, rough, it doesn't matter, but it should be about 140 pound. Nice thick paper means you don't have to stretch it. You don't have to worry about warping and buckling. You'll also need washi tape. This is our first masking that we're going to do. We're going to mask out a border, a simple clean white border, and we use the tape for that. You'll want watercolor paints. Remember mine are linked in the description, two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting your paintbrush, and then you're going to want your watercolor brushes. Whatever you use is fine, but today I'm using a number eight, number four, and number two round paintbrush, and those are also linked in the video description. And finally, you'll need masking fluid. This is a liquid latex that protects areas of your paper. Use a cheap paintbrush with the masking fluid, and you can purchase it on Amazon or at any art store. Okay, now you know the supplies. Let's talk about how we prepare or prep for this really simple piece. Step one is simply just to mask out a border. You want a clean white border and you're gonna do that by placing washi tape all around the paper. Next up, we need to mask out further areas of the painting by using the masking fluid. You paint this onto the page uh, just the way you would apply a thick paint. It's a liquid latex, it dries rather quickly. Um, so you might get some chunks, maybe practice with it a little bit before you use it on your good paper if you haven't used it before. But we're going to mask out areas in the shape of leaves. So it's a really simple shape that we're creating. And all you're gonna do is go around the entire paper adding as many leaves as you like. And that of course will remain nice and white. You'll have this beautiful negative space pattern once you remove the masking fluid after you're done the painting process process. So our preparation process looks like mask out that border using tape, mask out a leaf pattern using masking fluid, and then our final thing that we need to do is just mix up some paint colors. You're gonna wanna grab a couple different colors for the leaves. I'm using two different shades of green. I've got an olive brown and my deep thallow green. I've also mixed beautiful bright sap green in there because I want this to uh, look like spring, like really nice and bright and cheery. For the uh, flowers, you're gonna wanna choose a couple different colors. I'm using cobalt blue and I'm mixing a nice peach up using a bit of uh, rose and white and Joan Brilliant, but you can choose any colors um, that you like. Prep is done. Now we begin the painting process. You're going to paint some leaves and two different loose florals and that's all you need to know to create this entire piece and I'm gonna walk you through it. So first flower, you're gonna pick up lots of that peach or whatever color you're using in your brush 
and then we paint this one one petal at a time. Just slowly work out each petal shape. The second one there is a little smaller than the first. Then the third one's a little more flat. I kind of ran out of space and I just did a really little thin one for the fifth petal and guess what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's do another one together and you'll see like how loose and weird you can get with this. I'm going to pick up a little bit more pink. I mixed a bit more white in. This one will be lighter. And we'll just start with a petal shape, one or two brush strokes. Then another petal. And then I'm just going to kind of do a long thin brush stroke across the bottom and we've got a bit more of um, an angled flower. Like it really doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you can just make blobs on the page and it, it it's gonna look floral if you put some green stems and leaves it's gonna look like you painted flowers so speaking of leaves let's paint some I like to do my leaves with one or two brush strokes so you're gonna run that brush across the page once or twice and then using the tip of the brush you can refine the shape of the leaf and add those delicate stems or branches we'll do some more together you're gonna add a little pressure and one or two brush strokes gives you a leaf shape. Just paint that leaf in two or three strokes and then leave it alone. You can use the tip of the brush to refine the shape slightly and to add the delicate stem. So you run the belly of the brush, the larger part of your paintbrush across the paper, add that bit of extra pressure and then you use the nice fine tip of the paintbrush to do those leaves. So in that way, leaves are really good brushwork practice because you're using the brush in different ways. And the nice thing here is you've already mixed up a couple colors of green. So now you can grab from your darker green, grab from your lighter green, mix in extra water, and you're going to work all across this sheet of paper right over top of the masking fluid, practicing different shapes and sizes of leaves. And we've learned to paint that one floral shape. Add a couple more of those. Grab from your pink and add some more flowers. Work on the uh, brushwork. Think about how the brush feels in your hand. Don't worry too much about what a flower looks like or what a leaf looks like. Just think about painting one petal and one leaf at a time and then leave it alone. And then when you're ready, let's try that second floral shape. Remember two flowers and leaf shapes and that's all you need to know. So I'm going to grab from my blue and this flower is fun to paint because you're basically just painting little messy ovals in a cluster and you're going to let some of them touch, some of them will be totally separate. And then we grab a little bit of the green that's on our palette and we start adding little tiny lines to indicate stems and we can paint some long thin leaves as well. And that's the second floral shape. It's very loose, it's messy. You can paint these as large or as small as you like. It could be a huge cluster of these little oval shapes or it could be a very small little tiny one with just two or three. You're thinking sort of lupin or lilacs. It doesn't have to be any certain flower. Hour, it can just be kind of a, a floral idea. And you notice, you might notice I've mixed a little purple into my cobalt blue as well. And that just adds um, something nice and gives this, makes this flower a little more dynamic. We've got different shades of blue and um, mauve sort of happening all within one flower. And of course the green is also um, blending and blurring really nicely. And then that's kind of it. You've prepped your piece, you've masked out a border and a leaf design. You've mixed your paints, chosen your color palette, and you've learned to paint two different flowers. And of course you're practicing those beautiful loose leaf shapes. Now, all you have to do is kind of repeat. So keep on painting, keep practicing. If you paint a leaf that looks really weird, guess what? It's not gonna matter. You're never going to see it on a large scale piece like this. I'm working nine by 12 today and we've got all these messy loose floral shapes and they can be really messy, I'm telling you. I painted some weird ones, some stuff that was like, that looks like nothing, but that's okay, that is the joy and that's the 
the fun of loose watercolor florals. We're just kind of hinting at the idea of flowers and leaves. And this is, again, great brushwork practice. So concentrate on how the brush feels in your hand, how you kind of pull it across the paper. Think about how much pressure you add. Think about how much water you've added to your paints. And if that affects, you know, uh, the color or the way the paint flows off the brush, this is practice, remember. If at any point you want to add some more color, I felt like my spring floral needed a little yellow. So I mixed up uh, a nice buttery yellow here and I'm just adding some dots and I will join those with some delicate stems um, but really any shape goes and uh, also thinking about the color palette as you paint if you want to add something darker I decided I need a really dark rich green to add that contrast and the last thing I'll say is remember you're painting right over top of that masking fluid and paint right up to the edge of the tape and right over top of it as well in order for these masked out areas to really shine when all the tape and masking fluid comes off you need to go over them with paint you don't want to avoid them so paint right over top of the tape and the masking fluid and fill in this big beautiful spring floral painting Okay friends, we have filled in this entire painting together. Now to complete those two flowers, I like to add a little contrast. So grab a darker blue or purple or lavender, and we're just gonna add a little dark spot to some of those blue flowers. And then I'm also mixing up a dark color for the pink flower. It could be brown, it could be magenta, and we're just putting some dotting and lines at the center of each of those flowers. And that kind of indicates the stamen. On the blue one, it's just a little, little amp up, a little contrast, some low lights. And on this one, it's actually the center of the flower. And finally, just really make sure that you've painted over the masking fluid. If you have to, just go right over it. It doesn't even have to be a leaf or floral shape. It could just be a big splotch of green or pink. And that brings us to our finishing process. Now what we need to do, the painting is done. We need to remove all the masked out areas. So we're gonna start by removing the tape and we have this beautiful clean white border. Well, mine's pretty clean. <laughs> and then we go ahead and remove all the masking fluid. Now make sure you've let your painting dry completely. Give it an hour, you know, you don't wanna go in and muss it up. And you can remove it by simply rubbing at it. It's kind of comes off like a racer dust. It's really rubbery and fun to remove, although a little bit tedious. And you'll see that beautiful white uh, negative space pattern that we created, that leaf pattern. And that's it. This was good brushwork practice. This was a great way to get yourself into the world of loose watercolor flowers. But we also, I think, created something really pretty and something that you can be proud of and potentially hang on your wall. Thanks for following along today. I hope you enjoy these watercolor tutorials. If you you do make sure to hit the subscribe button that really helps me out around here <laughs> and I will see you soon with a new tutorial